Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So last week we spoke about Elefasi Masomi. He is known as a Tokoloshi killer. And if you haven't watched that, I will link it somewhere up here for you. But today we're gonna travel the globe again and we're gonna talk about someone who's not in South Africa. And he is known as the Acid Bath Killer. So if you would like to know what this gentleman did or how he got this notorious or infamous name, then let's get into it. Intended for mature audiences only. So John Hay was born on the 24th of July 1909 in Wakefield, which is located west of Yorkshire in England. So when John was growing up, the area of Wakefield at the time was quite industrial. But I guess luckily for John, he was a lot more well off than the people in these areas. So according to a lot of people, he had a better upbringing than most of the people in the Wakefield area. John's dad was an engineer who was named John Robert Hay. And John's mother's name was Emily Hudson. And obviously she got married to... Her husband John and her surname changed to Hay. It was said that John's parents were very, very religious and they were members of the Plymouth Brethren, which was part of the conservative Protestants. But anyway, so John's dad had a mark on top of his head and John kind of asked about this when he was a child and John's dad said that it was actually part of a scar that God had given him because he had sinned. And if John was to sin, he would also get the same mark, which I mean, could have been a birthmark or could have been a scar. We don't really know, but that's what he told John as a child. And during John's childhood, he actually went on to be quite a bully and he would continuously get in fights and he would continuously be mean to kids because according to John, he had sinned. But he never got this scar on his head, so he thought that he kind of skipped the wrath of God's fury. So he thought that it was fine to commit more sins, basically. Later on, John would say that he had terrible religious dreams as a child, which would keep him awake and often scare him a lot at night as a child. And I'm not sure exactly what happened in his dreams, but he did bring it up quite a lot. And John, in some instances, was also quite secluded as a child because his dad would build this massive fence around their house in Wakefield so that he could keep all the people who were not religious out of their house. But besides all of that, John was apparently quite a talented child and he would play the piano really, really well. And he was quite interested in classical music specifically. And as a child, John would be awarded many scholarships one of the first scholarships that he was awarded was to attend a quite prestigious school, and that was to the Queen Elizabeth Grammar School. And the second scholarship that he received was to Wakefield Cathedral, where John actually became a choir boy, which I think if you hear about what he did later on is quite ironic. And when John left school, he did end up working as an apprentice under very well-known and very good motor engineers at the time. So he did end up working on cars when he left school. This is just hearsay, but apparently John left his working with cars quite soon after he started because he hated the dirt that the cars would give off. And it was said that he would only work with a mask and gloves on. So after about a year, he left working with cars and he went to work in insurance and advertising. And when he was around 21 years old, he was actually fired because it was believed that he had stolen money. But in 1934, he did end up getting married to a lady that he hardly knew. And his wife did end up getting pregnant. And I'm not sure if it was actually because he was charged with fraud during their marriage and he went to jail that they got divorced but they ended up getting divorced quite soon after they were married and it was said that the baby that John's wife was carrying at the time she did end up giving up for adoption and I'm not sure if John ever saw the baby or was ever interested in seeing the baby that was his. John went to jail and he did get out but every time he got out he ended up going back to jail because he kept on committing fraud but it was said that John was very good at this because he was very handsome and very articulate but he kept getting caught and obviously this getting caught thing was irritating to John. So when he was in jail for, I don't know, like the fifth time, he tried to come up with a plan to stop getting caught. And John thought, okay, obviously having these victims and the victims going to the police are obviously the reason that I'm getting caught. So he now tried to think up a plan to try and get rid of the victims so that he wouldn't go to jail. So John did his reading while in prison. Don't know really why they have these books, but he was inspired by another serial killer who was actually French named George Alexander Soret or Soret, who happened to dissolve his victims in acid. So when John was out of prison, he managed to get his hands on some sulfuric acid and he would test this out and start experimenting by putting mice in buckets and then pouring sulfuric acid into the bucket to see what happened to the mice. And the mice did end up dissolving in the acid. So later John was actually asked by police why did you actually do this? And John said, quote, When I first discovered there was an easier way to make a living than 
to work long hours in an office, I did not ask myself whether I was doing right or wrong. That seemed to me to be irrelevant. I merely said, that is what I wish to do. And John would specifically try and target women because he said that giving a woman flattery is the way to kind of seal the deal and get in. But John did not actually only murder women. His first victim was actually a man and one of his colleagues at the time. And his name was William McSwan. And William was invited over to John's house where John then proceeded to hit William over the head. And then William became unconscious. And then John decided to submerge William's body into an acid bath. And once William was dead, John decided now to go and live in William's actual house. William's parents would come over to his house expecting William to be there, but they found John there. And they asked John, where's William? And John said that William had gone and run away because he was scared that he was going to be called in for the war. And his parents were like, okay. And they went away, but while John was staying in William's house, he was cashing all of his checks and living quite a wealthy or free-flowing cash life. But John had a gambling problem and the money often didn't last very long with him. And William's parents did become suspicious because they kept coming to the house and they didn't really think that William would run away. So John ended up inviting William's parents over to his house, saying that William's here and he wants to say hello because he missed you so much. But his parents didn't end up leaving the house because John hit them over the head, both of them, put them in an acid bath and waited until they dissolved. In. Now, remember I told you that John was a very good pianist or piano player and he would go and play for very, very wealthy people at the time when they had parties or if they just wanted to entertain their guests for dinner or anything like that. But John would say that later when he was actually in these houses, he would be looking around for things that he could steal and sadly he did end up actually murdering a very wealthy couple by shooting them and then putting them in the acid baths and waiting for their bodies to dissolve as well. And he obviously stole a lot of their belongings and he also forged their signatures so that he could keep on buying himself really expensive things. One of John's last victims was an elderly lady who recently became a widow and I think she put something in the newspaper where she needed help and John obviously jumped at this opportunity and he came up to her address saying that he was an engineer and he could help with whatever she was looking for. So she invited him in and then he shot her and he dissolved her body as well inside the acid bath. According to police, he only took her belongings. He didn't forge her signature. And the cops were actually on John's tail quite soon after the older lady went missing because someone who knew John and the older lady saw both of them together and he saw them leave together as well. So some serial killers do end up keeping souvenirs of their victims to kind of revisit at a later stage, which kind of led to John's downfall because police did get a warrant to search John's house and they found small pieces of belongings or small pieces of evidence that did belong to the missing victims but John thought that he would get away with it when the cops came to give him a warrant for his arrest because John believed that if there was no body there was no crime so police really wanted to make sure that they could get a big big case for John so John was let go and they ended up following him for a while and one day John went into a forest which they followed him in and they let him do his own thing and when John eventually left they went to see what John was doing so deep in the forest so late at night and the cops actually found remains of human fat, dentures, a foot and some gall stones and of course John was then arrested and put on trial and during the trial John tried to plead insanity because of the gruesome murders that he actually committed but the judge did not believe him at all and on the 10th of August 1949 he was hanged and that is the story of the acid bath killer while I was reading up someone did comment on one of the articles that this is a very good way to murder your victims. It always makes me wonder how people get hold of such items or how they're able to get hold of arsenic, how they're able to get hold of sulfuric acid in such big doses. Or maybe it is available and I just don't know about any of these things. But anyway, so that is, like I said, the story of the acid bath killer. I hope that you enjoyed this case and I hope that I will see you again next week. Bye!